It is time to pick who the games are going to. Home and away, you know we got the play. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Week 12 recap. Your boy went 7-6. and six. Got a lot of games wrong this time. My upsider of the alert was, uh, was the um, Packers over Eagles. I was, uh, I was off. Uh, missed it this week. Uh, but some interesting ones. Um, the, uh, the Panthers over the Broncos. The Browns over the Bucks. Uh, they came off a of bye week. The Bucks did. Uh, the Seahawks lost to the Raiders. I got that one right. Uh, I had the Raiders winning by three. They won in the OT by six. But Seahawks also came off of a bye. Um, and the uh, Steelers beat the Colts on Monday Night Football. So, uh, interesting week. Week 13 still has uh, bye weeks. There's two teams on byes. It is the uh, Cardinals and Panthers. Uh, two teams that met in the NFC Championship in 2015. 15 seasons, 16 uh, calendar. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we're, uh, we're hours before the first game of the week tips off, so let's go ahead and get all the picks in. We have a total of, uh, of 13 games. Actually, I'll take that back, 15 games, because there's two teams on by, so that means, you know, 32 teams, 16 matchups, so 15 matchups. So it's a lot of games being played. Let's get to it. Kla, kla. So we're going to talk, start off week 13 with Bills at Pats. Bills at Pats. The Bills have already played the Pats this year. They beat them. Um, Stephon Diggs typically plays very good against the Patriots, especially since Stephon Gilmore left New England. Um, the game is in New England, and they have momentum. Um, the Bills The Bills haven't been the sharpest team. They've been losing. They've been winning very close games. They almost lost to Detroit last week, but they've had ten days now to get ready, or seven days to get ready for the the Pats. They've also had seven days because they both these teams played on Thanksgiving last Thursday, so they should be healthy both of them. Uh, but I just don't see. I see the Bills coming up top, twenty three to thirteen. Uh, they just have a better roster. Uh, Pats will make it. Will will make it tough, but at the end of the day, I don't think Josh Allen makes any boneheaded mistakes that keeps the Pats in the game. So I got the Bills winning twenty three to thirteen. Moving on now to the Packers at the Bears. Um, Aaron Rodgers um, got injured, but he's going to try and play uh, in the last game against the Eagles. Um, the Bears, uh, their defense is I think now dropped to like one of the worst. Uh, Justin Fields didn't play last game. I think he's going to play this one. Even if he doesn't or does or A-Rod does or doesn't, this is two two struggling teams in a same, the same division duking it out. In Chicago, both teams are used to the cold. I got to be in some points being scored here. Uh, Christian Watson is for the Packers, man, he can fly. And the, for the Bears, I think uh, um, Cole Komet and um, Cole Komet and some of their other young players uh, – are gonna probably shine shine out here. Not their Darnell Mooney's of the of the bunch for Chicago, but I got Green Bay winning at Chicago, thirty four to twenty eight. Moving on to Steelers at the Falcons. Steelers coming off of a big win last week against the Colts. Now they're on the road against Atlanta. Now Atlanta, seeing that um, they did lose to the Commanders, but seeing that the um, that the Buccaneers lost as well, they're still only half a game behind the Bucks, so they need to win. So they can, you know, p surpass them because the Bucks playing later. I don't think their chances are the best this week. But I mean, uh, I got the Falcons winning at home, uh, holding off the Steelers. Um, Steelers got a lot of good young young talent on the offensive side, uh, defensive side. They've been they they've they've been they've been bending, but they haven't been broken. So I see this being a little low scoring, more in the Steelers territory. You know, they have pass rushers can get after the quarterback. The Falcons, uh, that that depends. This honestly could be a, a showout game for the Steelers, but I'm just I'm going right here by the Falcons mentality, how it should be, knowing that the Bucks are they can they're slugging it out for that uh, number one for that one spot in the division. I got the Falcons winning twenty two to nineteen. Could be very wrong here, but either way, this should be a close within a three score game. If it goes the Steelers' way, I see the Steelers winning by ten. Because they're gonna, I don't think the Falcons' offense, defense, gonna stop the Steelers' offense. Jets at Vikings. Now the Jets are uh, have been good on the road, and uh, the Vikings have the point point differential in their wins have said that 
that they're a very lucky nine, uh, eight and two, nine and two team. But anywho, the Vikings are at home. Um, it's gonna be a good matchup, Sauce Gardner against Justin Jefferson, unless they're playing a, a zone and then all these crossing routes that the that the Vikings run. Look for Dalvin Cook to have a big game here because uh, he was uh, I think he was sidelined last week, didn't had didn't do much, but. The Vikings are definitely going to look to come out and make a statement against a good team. Uh, you know, they won last week, uh, beat the Pats. So there's another AFC East team for them in the matchup. So, yeah, I got the Vikings winning here, 23-21. to 21. But don't be surprised if it's the Jets behind following Mike White uh, make some noise as well. Jags at Lions, uh, two struggling teams, both coming off wins last week. I called Detroit. Detroit lost on Thanksgiving. That's right. The week before they came off of a win. But they're playing the Jaguars here at home. I think Detroit's going to handle handle business. Now, their defense played a lot better since uh, the first seven, six weeks of the season. And the Jags aren't consistent enough, in my opinion, to favor them right here on the road. Uh, I got the Lions winning 27-17. to 17. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, for his for his sake, it would be important for him to come, off, come up with a good back-to-back -back win right here. Uh, but I don't see it happening against the Lions. They're a pretty, they're, they're pretty tough team, and they might dial up some heat on them as well. But who knows? Could go both ways. Titans at Eagles. Big matchup here for the Eagles and the Titans. Titans coming off a loss last week against the Bengals. Eagles coming off of a win. Uh, I've got the Eagles winning at home 24-16. to It's one of those situations where the, if the Titans can't run the ball and get, up on, get, get on top of them early, I don't see the Eagles making any... Bone making mistakes or getting away from what's going to keep them ahead of Tennessee. I see this being a time of possession battle between two teams. Special teams battle as well. Not a lot of points scored. The Eagles will score. They'll have probably 300 yards of offense. The Titans might have shy of 300, but I got a 24-16 Philadelphia. And there's just too much for Tennessee to um, overcome if they don't score and get on top of them early. And I don't think the Eagles are going to let that happen at home. Browns at Texans. Uh, Texans play the Cowboys next week. In Dallas, Texans are home, hosting the Browns, coming off a win against the Buccaneers. I see the Browns winning here. Um, there's no telling when they're uh, when Deshaun Watson gonna be able to play for him, but I like their running tandem, Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb. I want Nick Chubb to score as many touchdowns and get climb up that stat sheet as much as he can. I respect for the running backs. Same with the Texans, Damian Pierce. He's gonna probably give the Browns a hard time. You can see uh, each team having a hundred yard, uh, hundred yard running. On, on the ground performers this game. Potentially Amari Cooper and Brandon Cooks could have 100 yards receiving each. But I got the Texans losing. Uh, Browns over Texans, 30-20. to 20. Now we got Commanders at Giants. Big NFC East matchup between these two teams. Both teams are the bottom two, but still over 500. The way, given the way the Commanders have been playing, I think they're going to upset the Giants in New York. It's not really an upset, but obviously the road team beating the home team here. And I'm going to say it's because... Uh, they're going to make just fewer mistakes, and they're going to convert more third downs, in my opinion. The Giants are going to be kept to a lower third down completion percentage, and the commander is going to be higher. That's going to lead them to win this game, possess the ball last, kick a field goal. I got the commanders winning at New York 26-23. to There's just something about a little, little Taylor Heineke. They just got that momentum. And, of course, the Washington commanders front seven, toughest ones in the league. And um, I don't see Saquon Barkley... Um, I, I, he's he, he's going to have over 100 yards from scrimmage, but receiving and rushing combined, I don't have him going over 100 yards rushing against this team. Broncos at the Ravens. Now, these two teams have squared off in the playoffs for some memorable matchups. Or um, everyone, A lot of people remember Peyton Manning's seven-touchdown passing affair opener uh, whenever the that was the opening match after the Ravens won the Super Bowl week, week one of week, uh, 2013. But this time around, the Ravens are the strong favorite here. In my prediction, I don't even know why I gave Broncos score 17. But the Ravens' defense can leak them sometimes. They have busted coverages. You never know. But I got the Ravens winning at home, 31-17. Broncos' organization is just a mess right now, so I don't really have ex expect much for them. Um, their defense is A1, but your defense can't, w can't score you. If, if your defense can't score you 19 points a game, um, it's really not that all for that much and a lot of Broncos fans can attest to that I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure Dolphins at the 49ers matchup of the week right here matchup of the week look for the Dolphins to come after the Niners but look for the Niners to do the same the Dolphins punch them in the 
punch them in the throat, try to run down their faces, um, down their fins. Honestly, I don't see the – this is going to be a tough game. Uh, this is my game of the week. I got the Dolphins winning. Um, I like to having success. It's good for him. It's good for the league, you know, their young quarterbacks. Uh, they put a the heck of a team around him. Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle are going nuts. One and two receivers on their respective teams, both about to go over a thousand yards. Tyreek Hill already is. Uh, their running backs are solid. Raheem Mostert. Uh, they have good tight end play. Their defense young, uh, drafted. Uh, the Niners are gonna have a handful because they're the more experienced, more veteran team. Uh, and I can argue their defense is better than the Dolphins, but both defenses are gonna get tested here, and it's gonna be a heck of a performance to watch. For either fan or neutral fans. But anywho, I got the Niners losing at home to the Miami Dolphins 30 to 28. Seahawks at the Rams. Two uh, division opponents. Uh, with the, if the Niners lose to the Dolphins, the Seahawks are gonna have to have their in, ears pinned back and beat the Rams. There no, there's no easy opponents in the NFL ever, no matter how bad a team looks or plays on a week to week basis. Now the Rams are at home. And uh, they might be getting Stafford back. You know, Cooper Cup was only supposed to be out four weeks. That could give the Seahawks trouble, who have been struggling since their bye week. Um, so, you know, I got the Seahawks winning, but it ain't going to be pretty. Uh, Kenneth Walker needs to get established. He needs to get average more than two, three yards of carry for them to have a chance. Otherwise, Geno Smith, uh, he's able, capable of pulling off a game winner, but you can't ask him to do too much. You can't ask any quarterbacks to do too much, especially when that pressure is coming for you. And I think the Rams can accumulate pressure they just haven't been doing it consistently this year i got the seahawks winning at la 21 to 18 three point of fear <clears throat> chargers at the raiders now the raiders were up on the Chargers week one and they kind of blew that game so i think the raiders this time around in las vegas the rams are playing la so the Chargers have to be on the road right uh i got the raiders winning here 33 to 27 Devontae and carve come along josh jacobs leading the league in rushing Keep toting the rock, young man. The Without Austin Eckler for the Chargers and some consistent play from the receivers, uh, I don't never really trusted their defense. And same with the Raiders. I can't trust any defense. So I think it's going to be higher, higher scoring, and the Chargers are going to be one possession away, maybe run out of time to probably tie and take the lead. I can see this game being played out. The team with the least penalties will win this game. I got the charge, the Raiders beating the Chargers in Las Vegas 33-27. Now the rematch of the AFC Championship, Chiefs at Bengals. This game is in Cincinnati. Uh, they played last year, and Jamar Chase had a, over 200 yards receiving. I don't think he's back healthy, but even if he is, uh, you need T. Higgins and Joe Mixon to be your catalyst here in this game. Even Hayden Hurst, you know, because he can get some good mismatches against the Chiefs. Not even less, less going against Nick Bolton, but, you know, if he's that good, he has a chance to showcase it against the best tight end, Travis Kelsey, who I think is going to score three touchdowns this game. Just it's, it's just that simple. He's that elite. Uh, Chiefs on the road at the Bengals. Bengals are pretty hot. One last, two of the last three. Um, Chiefs haven't lost in several weeks. Uh, they're going to be the biggest, bad team to knock down. So the Bengals are going to be looking to do that, but I don't think they come out successful. I got the Chiefs winning 41 to 34. And that's our uh, America's CBS game of the week for the AFC. Saturday Night Football, Colts at Cowboys. Your boy works early. I get to watch them finally. It's going to be nice. Uh, Colts on the road. Uh, coming off of a loss last week, almost beat the Eagles. I think that steam is running out for Jeff Saturday. Could be wrong. But anywho, the Cowboys are a better team. I need to see him commit less penalties, get on top of him early, beat down the opponent, and don't stop. Don't let him get no hope, no light for them to come back and hang him around in the game. I got the Cowboys defense committing three turnovers here. Uh, hopefully a defensive score and uh, playing a steady offensive game. 100 yards, more rushing attempts than passing attempts. Cowboys win here 34-13. Saints at the Buccaneers, Monday Night Football. I've seen some ugly games between these two teams, especially for the Bucks. So honestly, all I'm gonna say here is, the even if the Bucks lose to the Saints, the the, the they're tied with the Falcons for the lead. So not the worst, but then again, you don't want to go into the playoffs looking like looking like two cents. Ever, you know, so they're gonna tr do their best. They don't like the Saints. Saints don't like them. It's gonna be a lot of penalties here, a lot of some probably some scuffles, some ugly fights. I want to see Mike Evans get back in the end zone for the Bucks. He hasn't been in the end zone in a week. Um, you know, I hope his streak of consecutive seasons with a thousand yards isn't in jeopardy. So he needs to do something. Uh, other than that, uh, I got the Saints actually winning. I feel like I picked the Saints a lot of times this year when they haven't won, but you know it's who that it's their goal. I like the uniforms, and then 
You never count them out because their defense is never bad. It's just kind of not been where it needs to be for them to win games this year. And they haven't, they've lost a handful of close ones. So, yeah, I think the Saints are going to upset the Bucks. <laughs> upset. Uh, the Bucks should win, but don't be surprised if they lose. Saints over Bucks, 17-14. And that wraps up Week 13, ladies and gentlemen. Again, continue supporting. I appreciate it. Uh, like, subscribe. Uh, NFL is going into December and then the postseason a month, five, five, five weeks away because of that extra game. So, you know, we're getting into the nick of things here. Last week is our last uh, NFL's last week of buy teams having buys, which is week 14. So after this, after week next week, it will be 16 matchups every week up until week 18. And when the playoff picture is completed, set and uh, on the on the horizon, chasing that cup, chasing that cup. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy the evening.